Hey everyone, Disturbed Shadow here, finally concluding the In Flames discography with the soon to be released 11th album from In Flames entitled Siren Charms. Now, before I start, I just want to say I'm feeling a little bit sick today, but I really do want to get this review out there before the album comes out because I'm going to be pretty busy this week, so I won't be able to review it actually on the release date. So, even though my voice might be sounding a little bit weird or something like that, I'm still just going to power through this review. So, uh, let's just jump in and uh, talk about this album, which is about to come out. So, first thing I want to say is that, like I said in the Sounds of a Playground uh, fading review, that that was a step in the right direction from the, uh, the previous album, A Sense of Purpose. And now, I think this album is a step forward from that as well. Like, as in moving in that direction. But it's also a look back at where they've been in the past, I actually think. Because there's actually a lot of moments in this album which reminds me of the album uh, Soundtrack to Your Escape, which they released ten years ago. And that, like I mentioned in the review of that, was my least favorite album from them at, the point in, at that point. And it still is. And I think that that was still their weakest album. But I think... This album pulls a lot from that album, but it pulls stuff that they did right on that album, and they dropped some of the stuff that really wasn't working well on uh, Soundtrack to Your Escape. So there are a lot of elements pulled from that album that sort of fit on this album, but it also moves in the direction of the um, how Anders had said that they're doing less screams and growls and stuff like that and focusing more on singing, and they progress further in that direction with this album, with Anders doing a lot more singing than he did on the previous album, and a lot more clean melodic singing as opposed to the more gruff sort of singing that he did on the last couple of albums, where it's focusing more on the melodic style of singing. And I think it does enough that it really sets this album apart from where they've been in the past. And what I like about the Flames is that they're not afraid to try new things with each album. Even though sometimes it doesn't always work out and the fans aren't always pleased with it, or it's not really musically that good, but I like that they're not afraid to try new things. And again, they try new things in this album, and it works a lot. It works a lot, or it works good in a lot of places, but in other places, there's some negative stuff that I don't really like. But overall, I think it's a really solid piece of, or they're all really solid pieces of music. There are some parts where it's not as good as where they've been in the past, or as good as other stuff on this album, but overall, I think it's still a pretty solid album. Now, before I actually listened to this album, I did listen to a, or re, watch a few reviews on YouTube to see just what people were thinking about it as I was going into this album. So I kept some of that stuff that people were talking about in mind, or in mind as I was going into it. But I also went in with an open mind because a lot of people were saying that criticism and stuff like that. So I was trying to keep those in mind, but while also going in with an open mind and, and trying not to let preconceived notions of what this album was get in the way. Because from what I heard, it was a kind of disappointing album. But after actually listening to it for myself a few times, I'm actually quite impressed with what they did on this album. So now let's just jump in and talk about uh, some of the specifics of this album. So first, let's talk about the opening track, In Plain View, which is one of the best songs on the album. It has a cool, like, synthy intro before coming in with heavy riffs and this cool melodic guitar stuff. But what I really like about this song is Andrew's vocals performer, vocal performance. Is just really solid when he ranges from more clean melodic style singing, a bit of gruff singing, and then of course he's got uh, some screams and growls mixed in there, and it comes together very nicely. And the chorus is really where it shines, and where his voice really shines. It's just this layering of the more rough style singing with the melodic on top of that, and then a bit more uh, screams uh, sort of in the background behind that. Cool, this cool layered vocal effect. And the way it all comes together just has really powerful melodies on the vocal end of things. Plus there's a lot of cool guitar stuff going on throughout this song, which is something that in some places on this album isn't really happening, but on this album the guitars are very solid. And combined with the, the good stuff on the vocals I was talking about, it makes a really good sounding piece of music, and it's a good way to introduce this album. Track number two is entitled Everything's Gone, which is one of the tracks on the album that really, really reminded me of stuff from uh, Soundtrack to Your Escape. Just the way the guitarists are just really just remind me of that album. And it's sort of with that slow, sort of chugging, heavy sounding riff that sort of kind of sounds generic, but that really was because on the Sounds of a Playground fading, or not, sorry, Soundtrack to Your Escape, 
they uh, they sort of overdid that style of riff and it became repetitive on this album. So for that album, it was kind of generic. But they don't really do that as much on this album. But there are a few moments where they have those style riffs, but it's not overdone. So on this song, it it works because they're not doing it constantly throughout the whole album. And on the vocals, there's a lot of screams in this album, which I mean on this song, which compared to the rest of the album, it's a lot more scream focus than on a lot of the other songs on this album which again really reminds me of what they were going for on soundtrack your escape with the 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 kind of heavy slow chugging riffs and the more sim simplistic drum parts where they have lots of heavy heavy screaming vocals and it just it, like i said it really reminds me of some of the songs from uh soundtrack to your escape track number three entitled paralyze is another one that sort of reminds me of soundtrack to your escape with uh, the simplistic sort of guitar sounding thing that they did where they have the two like both both guitars playing this uh, sort of simple but really heavy chuggy sort of riff and like I said it reminds me of that kind of stuff they did on the soundtrack to your escape at least on the guitar end on the vocal end Andrews is going for a more uh, melodic style of singing that really wasn't as prevalent on that album but on this album or on this song he really focuses on that so it like I said it pulls a bit from soundtrack to your uh, escape but also pulls from this new direction they're going with the more melodic style of singing I think it comes together in a pretty decent song it's not really the best on the album but it's still a pretty solid track and worth listening to track number four through oblivion which was one of the singles off the album where the, a lot of people really really didn't like the song because it was very 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 different from what in flames has done in the past where it's more pulled back simplistic styles of riffs where they're not really distorted that much at all. It's more clean sounding on the guitar end of things. And Anders is very focusing on this sort of soft spoken uh, melodic style singing that is really, really different than what they've done before. And I think it comes together in a pretty decent song. It's not the best song on the album, but it's still worth a listen. And it's interesting in that how different it is from a lot of their other material. Track number six, With Eyes Wide Open, is another song I really like. It, it does that thing with the more simplistic, sort of uh, pulled back, clean sounding uh, guitar riffs. But on top of that, there's a lot of cool guitar melodies that really pulled me into this song. And it's another song that Anders gives a really powerful, melodic singing performance on this song that also pulled me into this song. Track number six is the title track, Siren Charms, which... I thought was one of the uh, songs that really didn't stand out to me as much. The guitar stuff that they were doing was a little bit weird, and I was sort of play a little riff, stop, and then play a more, play the riff with a little more, and then stop, and just do that and build up. But vocally, this song is another one, or good, another one that has that good vocal performance that Anders really shines on this song, and his voice sort of progresses throughout the the song, and it's just building, adding more powerful melodic singing that really showcases his uh how far his singing voice has come since like when they started he was mainly doing screaming vocals and not really showcasing his uh his uh singing talents but with each album they've added more singing into it and you really see that his voice has progressed over time and i think it, it, this song it really captures the power of his voice and i like how this song sort of progresses and builds over time on both the vocals and the guitars, but like I said, it's not one of the strongest songs on the album, but it's still a pretty good song. Track number seven, When the World Explodes, is another song that really reminds me of that uh, soundtrack to your escape era, where it has these really heavy, powerful riffs, at least in the beginning, and then they mix it up a lot with uh, bringing in a, a female vocalist to sort of trade off with Anders, who's doing mainly a, a screaming vocals on this song. And I think it comes together in a really nice way to hear that stark difference between uh, Anders and then this female vocalist they brought in, who sounds like a trained opera singer, actually. And it has a really nice feel to it, especially when they get into the uh, into the chorus, where in the background you can hear Anders doing this really deep, but in the background sort of backing vocal behind her more uh, powerful uh, operatic style of singing in it just blends really well together. And then there's a part towards the end of the song where most of the instrumentals 
or uh, Dropout, and it's just some synthy stuff and a lot of layered, uh, like just melodic sort of opera style singing. And it's not really any words are being sung, but it's just singing sounds like you would ex like you would hear in an opera. And I think just the way those vocal tracks are layered on top of each other is a really cool way to mix up the song sort of halfway through it. And then behind or on top of that, they bring back in the chorus with Anders and uh, the female vocalist they brought in. And then they, they, they just layer all these vocal tracks really well together. And I think that's an interesting way that, that they wrapped up this song by sort of dropping out the uh, sort of heavy riffing and stuff like that and focusing more on the vocals, which was an interesting approach. Track number eight was the first single, Rusted Nail, which is my personal favorite song on the album. It's just got a lot of interesting stuff going on. It starts off with this, like, calm and more clean-sounding guitar intro, and then there's another layer of guitars on top of that, and it just comes together really cool-sounding before they bring in the more heavy, chuggy sort of riffs. And then there's a really cool, like, solo-y bit right before the, uh, the uh, verse comes in. And what I really like about this song on the vocal end of things is that they do this really cool thing with a bunch of layered vocal tracks, like this gang vocal type thing, where they're all, where presumably Anders and whoever else they brought in to really make it sound like a large group of people singing, and the way they were all layered together just came together really nicely, and it really mixed it up from a lot of the stuff on this album and a lot of stuff they'd done previously where they didn't really try out this gang vocal style and I think it worked really well for this song and then this is another one that has a really really catchy chorus that pulls you into the song and I think this album really encapsulates the whole experience that is Siren Charms and it's like I said the best song on the album in my personal opinion and I think like I said it represents this album really well. Track number nine is Dead Eyes which didn't really uh, stand out to me musically, and there wasn't a lot of interesting stuff going on musically. But on the vocal end of uh, on the vocal end of things, it was a really good performance from Anders, and he has this really powerful melodic voice, like I keep saying, and he really showcases it on this song with these big soaring melodies on vocals. And like I said, he did a really good job on the song. And now we have two more tracks left to talk about. Number 10, Monsters in the Ballroom, which is another one that really reminds me of that uh, soundtrack to your escape style. And what I like about this one, like I said about uh, some of the other songs, is that it pulls that heavy, sort of chuggy, slowed down, sort of powerfully heavy riff. And this riff actually really reminds me of one from, like, soundtrack to your escape. With the way, just the production on the guitars on this riff, and the way they have like these other sound effects layered in behind it, which adds this really interesting feel to it. And then it pulls in that more melodic style of singing that Anders is going in that's layered on top of that. And that dynamic between the really heavy chuggy riffs and the very soaring sort of melodic performance from Anders gives a, a nice uh, balance between the heavier side and the more pulled back side. And it comes together in a really good song. And then finally, Filter Truth the final song, track number 11, which in a lot of reviews people really seem to single this out as not being a, as good a song as a lot of the other stuff on this album. But I personally really like this song. I think it's a really good way to end the album. The intro riff is sort of punky sounding almost, which is really, really a departure from what they've done before, but it sounds pretty cool for what they're trying to do with this album and with this song. And then... Anders has a really, really powerful vocal performance on this one, where he's trading off between more uh, melodic singing and really powerful screams and growls, and just the way he switches between them throughout the song is really cool, and it, it's definitely, like I said, a good way to end the album. Plus, there's a lot of uh, big sort of melodic uh, melodies, or, well, obviously melodies are melodic, but uh, guitar melodies throughout the end of this song that really really pulled me into the song, and like I said, it's a really good way to end this album. So, now that we're done talking about every single track on this album, because I just felt like like I needed to talk about every single song on this album, because there's a lot of interesting stuff happening, be it good or bad. But, now, let's move on to the actual band members themselves. As I've been saying throughout the entire review, Anders on vocals did an amazing job, be it bringing back a lot of those really, really, really heavy, powerful screams and growls that were sort of toned down a bit on previous 
releases, but in the few places where they do pop on this album, they're a lot heavier than they have been on their last couple of albums, and I really like to see that they did that. And then, of course, on the uh, on the uh, the more melodic singing, Anders really shines, and you can see that his singing voice has progressed a lot over the over the years. And I really think that there's a lot of moments on this album where that really soaring style of singing really uh, suits him, and he does a good job with that. Now, this is the first album to feature uh, Nicholas on guitars after. Uh, Jesper left because on their last album it was just Bjorn Dorn on the guitar. So both him and uh, the new guitarist Nicholas are playing on this album. Who he was he had actually played with them briefly before, but now he's a full time member of the band. And uh, like I said, there's a lot of cool melodic guitar stuff throughout this album, and they both did a good job at that. But there are a few moments where the uh, the rhythm playing is a bit generic sounding, and really isn't doing that much interesting stuff. But there's also a lot of moments where they do this really heavy, chuggy stuff from the the soundtrack to your escape album that sort of reminds me of that album. But they don't overdo it like they did on that album, and that makes it interesting and not just boring thing, same thing over and over and over again, where they actually did it in moderation, and it worked really well when they did it that way. So they did a, a pretty decent job on the guitars, except for a few things that I didn't like, but... Overall, I think they did an alright job with that, and that the good outweighs the bad on the guitars. Peter on bass, there wasn't a lot of moments where the bass really stood out to me. Like, I couldn't really hear it, it wasn't turned up loud enough, or it wasn't really doing anything interesting when I could hear it. But, it did an alright job, and he kept up with what everyone else was doing, and there's a few parts where he helped to heavy up the sound. But, like I said, there's not a lot of moments where the bass is really that audible, or that it's really doing anything interesting, but he did an alright job with that. Daniel on drums. The drum drumming on this album is a bit more pulled back, and that fits with the direction they went on the album. Like on previous albums, I talked about how Daniel does all this crazy stuff, and that he really shines as one of the uh, best parts of the last few releases. But on this album, this is more pulled back thing that really fits the songs. But there are a few moments where he does do more crazy drumming stuff. But like I said, it's more simple and pulled back, but it fits for what they're doing on this album. Well, that's it for uh, the sound of the band, and uh, like I said I uh, in the beginning, there's a lot of stuff that uh, reminds me of the uh, their previous album, uh, uh, or not previous, but the album they released a while ago, Soundtrack to Your Escape, where they pulled from that, plus I continued on with the direction of, uh, that they, the direction of uh, sound of a playground fading, where they uh, focus more on the singing aspect of things. And that comes to those two things come nicely together to create something new, but also familiar to uh, to me as an Inflames fan. And I really like that they did that. Now, overall, it's not their best album. They a lot of other stuff they released back in the '90s will always be my favorite stuff from them. But it's nowhere near their worst album. So it's a it's a pretty solid album, and it's definitely worth checking out if you are a flame a, a fan of Inflames from any iteration of the band. Be it from their more melodic death metal style back in the 90s or their more alternative metal style they've done recently. You should definitely give this album a listen because you may find that you actually like it if you were going into it thinking you weren't. So at least give it a listen and give it a chance and you might find that is a pretty good album. So sorry for being so long-winded today. So I will let you guys go and I will see you next time with my next review.